Okay. Thank you everyone for turning up to the 2.30 session for the Open Programming Miniconf. Uh, we have a couple of JVM talks for you now. The first one is going to be presented by Steve Dalton, who is going to uh, be explaining why rumours of Java's demise have been greatly exaggerated. Please make him welcome. Thank you. Um, I've been a Java developer for some time, and I come to these conferences and um, hear lots of interesting ideas about Java, um, particularly in the Linux community. And I um, thought today I'd just do a little talk on my view on where Java's going and sort of dispel this myth that Java's dead. Maybe some of you might have thought that. I'll just quickly show our hands. Uh, who here's coded some Java in there? Yeah, pretty. Who currently uses Java as their main language? Okay, so quite a bit less. Other JVM languages? A little bit. Okay, cool. So um, I'll just crack into it. So in case you don't know, Java is more than just a language. Java is a language. It's a virtual machine, and it's also a process um, called the JCP. Um, lots of people don't realize that who aren't Java programmers, so they think of the language a lot. So, um, and it's chopped the bottom off of my screen. Okay. Um, I'm sort of giving my conclusion here right at the start, but I thought, what the hell? Um, so Java, a lot of people say Java is dead, but long live Java. There's the language itself is struggling a little bit. The JVM itself is doing very, very well. Um, it's everywhere, pretty much where I see. Unless you're a Microsoft shop, you'll see JVM in any, any big organization, small. Java the language, yeah, I'd agree. Maybe it's on, sort of, uh, on the ropes a little bit. The JCP, I'll get onto this a little bit later, but it's in a bit of strife. So first of all, JVM, if you're running on, I'm just talking about Linux here. Um, there's really only a couple of main options here. I've included a couple more here, but it's really the Open JDK and the Sun Java JDK. I think some Linux distros have started calling it the Oracle JDK now, but I know Ubuntu is still the Sun, Sun JVM. And there's the Open JVM. There's also this thing here called GNU ClassPath, which also was GCJ, lots of different names, and one that's been in the news a bit recently, uh, Apache Harmony, which does have a JVM um, component to it. So that's in a little bit of trouble as well, which we'll get onto. But yeah, really, if you're on uh, Linux, if you're running Ubuntu, Debian, um, OpenJDK, Sun JDK, are really well supported. It's, they're in the repos. It's just snap, get, install. Um, very easy. And also, a little one to watch is the da uh, Dalvik. It's not really a proper JVM. It's a virtual machine. But it's what powers our Android mobile phones. Um, there's some talk about that running on, on Ubuntu native. There's also talk about having Android on Ubuntu running on regular Java. So I'll get onto Java, the language. So um, before I get onto my main points, I'm just going to give a short little history lesson on what's happened with Java over the last 20 years. Um, it really started in 1990 with a project called the Stealth Project. Um, this guy, Patrick Norton, and um, became the Green Project. They were looking, early on, Sun were looking at mobile um, devices, set-top boxes mainly. And, and there was a language uh, called Oak, which actually ran on these boxes. And if anyone's familiar with any of this. Um, as we progressed through the years, it became a different project name. Names changed. And in about 1995, it became Java. Um, they released the JDK in 96. Um, JDK 1.1, things started to sort of gain momentum. We had inner classes, Java beans. A lot of these things we sort of take to go for granted now as Java programmers. So this is uh, 13 years old now, a lot of this. Um, Java 1.2 came along. We got Swing, JIT compiler, which made things a lot faster. Uh, collections. They also established something called the Java Community Process, which was a, a kind of standards body to um, navigate the uh, various spe Java specs. Um, 99, Java got pretty popular, 2 million downloads. Um, Java Platform 2 had lots of confusion about version numbers, and was it 1, 2, or 2? Had this little thing called J2ME, which sort of didn't really go anywhere. I don't know if anyone's done any J2ME programmers, programming. 2000, Apple came on with Java, 1.3, little bits and pieces. Uh, Java 1.4 was a big one, included um, better exception handling, web start, preferences, things like that. If anyone remembers all of this, it's like a bit of a 
it's quite interesting for me going back through all the list. Uh, J2E, 2004. J2OC5 was a big one. In 2004, we had um, things like generics, annotations, auto boxing, enumerations, all sorts of things came in. A lot of them I actually didn't use for quite a long time. I still don't really like generics. Um, we'll get onto that. 2006, J2SE um, 6, which didn't have a lot of changes in the language, but um, quite a lot of performance improvements. And this is the one that most people are on these days, unless you run an old application server that needs Java 5. And a little important little thing happened this year. We had this uh, Java 7 project began. Um, so that was uh, four, five years ago now. And um, OpenJDK started, the actual JDK itself and the, J, uh, the compiler, the JVM, a lot of that was open sourced. So then, basically, this, I'm getting to a point here. <laughs> um, we had a few little things, 2007, JavaFX. Anyone doing Java, JavaFX here? No? Um, little bits and pieces, 2009. Then this, uh, this thing came along, Oracle and Sun merged, which uh, we all got a bit nervous about. 2010, a lot happened. So in the meantime, the language hasn't really progressed a lot. People are getting quite frustrated. So 2010 was a really huge year for Java. Um, negatives and positives, but a lot of things to kind of worry about. And this is where people have sort of got very concerned recently. Um, so the Java 7 roadmap was pretty much, a, well, not abandoned, but really cut back. They dropped, dropped things like Java FX script, which caused a lot of trouble with some people. It was quickly forked. Oracle tried to sue Google. I think that's still ongoing. I don't know if anyone knows much about the case, how it's going. But that's still ongoing over the Delvic um, and patent, patent breaches. Um, Apple, Apple decided to deprecate Java in OS X. That was a little one that came through. Any people running Java on OS X here? A few? A few. Um, generated a fair bit of bad press, and I don't know if this was related, but then they, they donated it back to the OpenJDK project. IBM moved to open JDK, and the, J the JCP process basically turned into a complete mess. And I, I just kind of switched off a little bit halfway through and then just got back into it. But it, it lost a lot of Java people. It got so complicated, and people left the... Uh, I'll get on to JCP in a minute. So anyway, apparently in 2011, we're going to get Java 7. And apparently in 2008, we're going to get Java 8. Um, I have a pretty low confidence level on what's going to happen. Um, so I'm sounding very negative at the moment. My talk was supposed to be upbeat, so I'll get on to that. Um, so basically, a lot of innovation seems to be stalled in Java. Um, generics caused a lot of trouble. Closures were supposed to come in Java 7. We're getting closures, but they're, they're not closures in from what I can see, really. Um, meanwhile, .NET did, is doing very well. It's carrying, carrying on with the innovation. Dynamic languages are on the up. Functional programming is definitely back. Is anyone here doing, getting into functional programming? I know I'm starting to, trying to. Many people I work with are. Um, so why the hell am I developing on this platform? Well, the community's actually found a way, um, despite all of these problems. There's a lot of other alternatives on the JVM. And, um, one of my personal favorites is one called Groovy. Um, a lot of people describe it as super Java. It's basically Java with all the things it should have had a few years ago. It's a dynamic language. It has a very nice, clear migration path from Java. So if you don't know Groovy, you can just rename your Java files .groovy, compile them up with Groovy, and then gradually start making it a little bit more idiomatic. Um, it's very well established. It's using some big organizations. I work for the Suncorp Bank. We've got it all over Suncorp. Um, thanks mostly to a guy called Paul King, who's one of the Groovy um, authors. And there's a recent addition to it called Groovy++, which makes it static. So you can, people that don't like dynamic typing, you can make your code static, type, steadily typed. And there's a whole load of nice little projects that run on top of Groovy. Um, some of you may have heard of Grails, Gradle, Griffin is a swing GUI, as a um, thick client thing. Gaelic is a nice little framework for running on the Google App Engine, if anyone's doing App Engine stuff. And GPUS, uh, this one down the end here, a lot of people say GPARS, but it's GPUS, is a um, concurrency framework. Next we have Scala. 
Uh, I'm, I neglected to mention here before, these are basic canonical languages. So the canonical version of the language is on the JVM. So that is the version of the language. There's nothing else. Scala's the other one. It's statically typed, functional, or imperative. You can choose. So there's a nice little progression if you want to get into functional languages bit by bit. Um, Concurrency is built in. It's quite famous for being used in Twitter now. Twitter moved a lot of their stuff off for Ruby, I believe. Well, some of their stuff off Ruby to, to Scala. Uh, Foursquare uses it as well. Although I find Foursquare really unreliable, so I don't know if that's a great um, advert for Scala there. It has a little framework called Lyft for doing web apps, along with lots of other frameworks. Um, the third one is Clojure. Has anyone here used Clojure? Okay. A few there, that's nice. Um, Clojure is an interesting one. I'm only just getting into it myself. Uh, it's dynamic. It's based on, it's a Lisp. So that's a bit scary to some people, but I'm finding, I never did Lisp at uni, I'm finding Clojure quite interesting. Uh, it's functional. Um, concurrency, it's very good at that. So that's one of its big strengths. And it has a few frameworks already. Composure for doing web apps. Um, I don't even know how to say that. Leningen is like a Maven type uh, dependency framework. And there's some other languages in the JVM languages that are basically ports. So we have JRuby at the top there, Jython. Um, I don't know if many people are using Jython at the moment. And the, this one here is Rhino, which is a JavaScript implementation for, the, for Java, which is quite well used. And then there's a whole load of other languages. I probably haven't covered all of them here. There's quite a few. Um, Erjang seems to be getting a bit of attention, which is an Erlang port. Uh, Phantom here. This one's rather interesting. Has anyone done Phantom? I knew you would. <laughs> um, yeah, you can compile, um, compile it up on the .NET um, machine and also on Java and also compile to JavaScript as well. Uh, Resin is PHP. Gosu is a uh, language that they use for um, Guidewire, if anyone's used Guidewire. And then along with the, we've got all these other ones, Jaskal, we can guess what that is. JSqueak is a yeah, small talk implementation. Mirror is a modular JRuby, I guess you could describe it as. Noop is an incredibly dynamic language based, uh, its strength is testing. Jackal is uh, TCL you know, on Java. Frink's a nice little mathematics uh, DSL, which I don't know if anyone's played with. It's got a great little Android app. You can play around with maths. And there's a whole load of others. And you can create your own DSL if you want. And I think Tom might talk a little bit about creating your own JVM languages next. Um, finally, Java the community. Well, I won't get onto JCP, but one of the good things about Java, it has a strong community, lots of different um, libraries. IDEs are excellent. So we have Eclipse, everyone knows about, but also IntelliJ is now open sourced. NetBeans, open source. Plus, you can use pretty much every editor will have some Java mode. Um, oh, I did include Emacs. Um, it's a whole lot of Java open source projects out there. A good place to look is the Apache Foundation, uh, Codehouse, Project Kenai is the Sun, now Oracle, um, hub for all of these things. Um, also, a lot of stuff on Bitbucket, seeing as they've, they've been bought by Atlassian now, lots of people putting Java things on there, GitHub, of course. Um, we have a lot of web frameworks, so I won't go into all of them. Grails is the one everyone knows about, but there's many more. Uh, that's GWT, GWT. Uh, lots of people using Wicket at the moment, by the looks of it. Uh, Spring Roo got a bit of um, uh, interest recently. They were doing a thing at Yao uh, in Brisbane. If anyone went to that talk, that seemed to be very popular. And Play, which I find quite interesting, but never got into. Anyone doing Play? No. And there's a whole load of so-called enterprise tools sitting on the Java stack. There's many more than what's on this page, but there's some big companies using these. I know of a few big organizations using Alfresco and Pentaho quite a bit. And they seem to be going quite down quite well. Hyperx is a great sort of logging monitoring um, uh, enterprise app. Uh, finally, I'll just talk a little bit about the JCP. How am I going for time? All right. Um, so the JCP is basically what drives the Java standards. Um, there's something called the JS, Java spe Specification Request, JSRs. The actual JCP has its own JSR to actually describe the JCP itself. So if you want to know about JCP, you can look at that JSR. I can't remember the number. There's over 300 of them. Um, as I said, they've been going since, I think, 1996. Um, 
There's also a thing called, so JSR is made up of a reference implementation of the functionality plus something called a technology compatibility kit, which is how they prove that the JSR meets the spec. And there's an executive committee that votes on all of these JSRs. So um, that sounds pretty good. What's the problem? Well, the last year or so, there's been a lot of problems in the JCP. Um, one of the things, thank you. Um, one of the things uh, that has been in the press a bit is the Apache uh, Foundation. They've had problems getting a TCK license because of incompatibilities between licenses. Uh, Oracle don't sound like they've been particularly helpful in the whole process. Uh, we've had people leave the JCP. Um, all sorts of negative press on this whole process, which has actually given Java a fairly bad name, I would say. Um, so where are we heading? I'm not sure here. JVM is a very solid platform. It's, as I said before, it's everywhere. Toolset is pretty awesome. The community is still actually very strong at the grassroots, the people like ourselves. There's a little doubt about the language. People are saying it's the COBOL of our time, which might not be such a bad thing, but um, yeah, it's not sure where it's going there. And really, I haven't got a clue what Oracle are doing. There's all sorts of people trying to second guess what's happening internally in Oracle, but uh, um, we're not sure there. Um, my predictions, probably most of these will be false, but uh, I think the JCP process is probably dead. Um, Java 7.8 will probably be out. I'm not sure if anyone will really care much. Um, Groovy's being used more and more. So I work in Groovy, so I would probably say it's the best one, but I think it's going to replace Java in a lot of cases. Scala is also very popular. Closure, I'm not sure about that one. We'll see. I think the uh, talk about these big 100 core CPUs and the way concurrent programming is going, um, maybe that'll do well. We may see some forks in the open JDK, not sure there, but there's a huge there's a huge question mark really about the patents. So Oracle have already sort of muscled up a little bit on Google with their patents, and um, that's a big worry. Um, so we'll have to just watch the space there, um, and maybe we'll get Google Go on Android or something crazy like that if they have to back down. I'm not sure there. Um, if you want to hear more about my on these various ramblings. You can listen to my podcast if you want. Uh, it's called Coding by Numbers. We're also on iTunes. Um, I'll just open it up to questions if anyone has any questions. I'll try my best to answer. So, questions for Steve. How can Groovy go well if uh, Java, the language, starts to uh, decay? Well, Groovy actually doesn't really rely on a lot of the, the, the Java 7 stuff that's coming out. Groovy already does closures. Pretty much everything Java 7 is bringing, Groovy already does. I think there's a diamond operator in Java 7 which Groovy will take advantage of. So, so would it start to become less backward compatible, less interoperable? You mean with the, the new Java 7 stuff? I think they're tracking the Java 7 stuff already, the Groovy guys, so they will support the Java 7 stuff, but I, I don't think it really matters that much to actually most developers. The answer your question, yeah. Um, how much do you expect Invoke Dynamic to aid um, some of those dynamic languages you listed? Well, there was the, I think when all of these dynamic languages came out, especially the JRuby guys, they were saying this is going to speed up considerably the dynamic languages. But uh, from what I've read recently, the speed up is actually not going to be as great as they originally expected. So I think a lot of the performance optimizations have been done in spite of despite Invoke Dynamics. So I'm not an expert in this field, but I, from what I gather, it's not going to be a massive speed up. But, so that's why they're not so concerned anymore about the Java 7 stuff. There was, for a while, there was a lot of stuff on hold. And they were saying until Java 7, until Java 7. But maybe that's not so important this, now. But it will help, I think. But not, not orders of magnitude like people were talking about. It's, um, I don't know if you could answer this question, but you know, talking about where Java is going um, and the implementation of people taking on Groovy. What do you think about systems like um, IBM, WCM and et cetera that have heavily tied into Java? Do you see IBM turning around and starting to use something like Groovy? Uh, well, Java basically um, invested pretty heavily now into OpenJDK. They had quite a lot of developers on the Harmony project. They had six developers. They've switched them over to OpenJDK and given some more um, developers. So they're, they're fairly... Um, it sounds like they're pretty serious about OpenJDK. 
I actually didn't know a lot about OpenJDK until I did this talk and did a little bit of reading up on the process behind OpenJDK and it's uh, there's basically two Sun engineers, well now Oracle engineers, that control the whole OpenJDK commits. Uh, apparently that's loosening up a little bit, but uh, I'm guessing now IBM coming in there, maybe that will be shared a bit more. So I think IBM are pretty much, um, they're definitely serious about Java, uh, and they've pretty much come down on the Oracle side of the camp there, so I, I don't think it's going to go away there. Okay, more questions? No, everybody please thank Steve Dalton for his talk. Thank you.